Some people say, oh, I lived in New York for 10 years. That makes me a New Yorker. No, it doesn't. Have you gone through the struggles? Have you seen the old face of the city? You know, have you gone through the different challenges and hurdles to get to the point that you're at right now? The challenges create the New Yorker. If you don't bust your ass, you know, you have to work, you have to have a job, something. You have to fucking pay your rent, you know? It forces you. And if you're not gonna do that, you're dead. And then if you wanna do something outside of working, it's creative. You have to work harder. If something goes wrong in anything you do, you're fucked, man. The uh, rawness in the music in New York, based even into the 70s, comes from the strength and the hustle of surviving just to make it here. You know, and that's the hardest part of New York, is that daily grind of like putting food on the table and paying your bills, man. The whole problem with New York and trying to be a creative person in New York is that you're, it's always this uphill battle to just make enough money to make ends meet and that's not always the best environment for being super creative. You always have to be super creative in New York but then you have to have a little bit of hustle in you as well because you'll never hack it otherwise. The energy has like, sort of pushed and pulled me throughout the years of living here. It's sort of disgusted me at moments where I've been like, I need to go to a smaller village and be somewhere else. And there's been moments where I've been so in love with the energy of the city, it would blow my mind. There's never gonna be this like one thing that happens that makes this, this amazing, culturally vibrant, supportive place that's like, loves what you do or anything like that. Like no one gives a shit what you do. Wow, you put out 20 records last year, fuck you, you know? It keeps people humble, I think. Club culture in New York in the 90s, late 80s, was completely different than today. That was the escape. So when you went to New York to a club, these people were escaping the real life because they didn't have money, they were just surviving. So then the energy in this environment was, was super high because these people were just letting all their emotions out. You had like all sorts of people, all nationalities, the gays, everybody coming together. Like, Twilo is my, like, religious mecca. If you watch those old documentaries about when Patti Smith and all those people were in New York, and when they were in the Lower East Side, and you see the images of what the Lower East Side looked like and all that shit, it's like, it looks like a fucking bomb went off there. You know what I mean? That's why they came here. It was cheap. It was a, a cheap place to be, so that you could be creative, so you could just sit there and write all day if you wanted to. The club scene in New York City, it went uh, by the way of Rudy Giuliani. It was more or less uh, systematically shut down. Cabaret license is a law that was passed in the 20s. It's a racist law. It was passed because blacks and whites were dancing together. One way of controlling that was to create a license that you needed for dancing and then not granting that license to clubs where those kind of activities were happening. And they just kind of dusted off the books and discovered this law in the 90s and used it as a way to crack down on nightlife. I remember there was like a light in the DJ booth that the door guy out in front had to like switch on whenever, if, if police were coming, you know, I would have to stop the music and put on something that no one would dance to. I remember when I first moved to New York. I was dancing because I, I like to dance. I looked up and there was a bouncer there who was trying to tell me I couldn't dance. And he pointed at the wall and there was actually a sign that was saying, no dancing allowed from the cabaret laws. Those definitely had an impact on the, the electronic music scene in New York. So all these spaces disappeared and then there was no way to party no more. People are always gonna wanna move here. There's, there's the legacy that the city has and it's always gonna be attractive for people to wanna come here. If you move here, just be chill, be humble, 
you know, be nice to the people who like, who are actually from here. A record store, it's a really cool place to learn about things. If it's basically like a cultural meeting point. You meet all sorts of people you would never meet, and you meet in a context which is like extremely neutral. You're at a record store, everyone's there, what, to, to learn about music, to hear music. And if you hang around the shops and you get to know people, you're gonna meet some people with real personality here. You learn from older people. You learn from someone who's 60 years old, 70 years old, who's weathered, you know, years and years of the world beating the shit out of them and they're still around. And if some guy, you know, he comes in there, he puts on a record, you know, you're gonna hear something probably that you never heard before and you could open your mind up to some shit. There's an album by David Allen from Soft Machine and Gone. Uh-huh. He did like an Indian album. You know, oh. if you ever seen it? No, never. It's pretty rare. I traded one copy I had for a Led Zeppelin promo and found out from the guy I had another copy. It's like, I get that copy. So he traded me really good stuff. Cool. It, this is like the real, you know, magic of like a city like this. You know, it's people coming together, you know. People coming together that wouldn't necessarily be together in one room. He's got a lot of talent. He really should have had a record store. If I know, man. Money. He should have, that guy should have. should have partnered at one point. I know, but. Two young guys with brains and enthusiasm for the industry that could be fair. <laughs> you could have made money. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Later. Hey, right, what if for delivery? Damn, cold. Phone number is 22479. The thing that initially brings people to the city through history is the creativity the energy, you know, the arts bring people to the city. Now they crush that. They crush anything creative and like, you know, the powers that be, that's a really s small thing on their radar. It's all pushed to the side. Neighborhoods become nicer, rich people move in, you know, the strollers come in, the suits come in, the jocks come in, and then it's done. The artists are always getting pushed out. They're getting pushed out further. The artists will move somewhere that's affordable and cheap. And the next wave of people that wants to move in wants to move there because the artists have made that a cool, hip place to live. There is no more space for nightlife in Manhattan. And that's how people started to turn their focus to Brooklyn. So people, you know, kind of went to Queens, but they realized it was a little too far. So Brooklyn was, you know, one stop. Boom, you're in Manhattan. So then what happened was, we started doing love parties, DIY, and then it became like an infrastructure, and then that built uh, what's currently going on today. Mr. Saturday Night, first and foremost, is the community. You know, in this day and age when communities break and dine a lot, you know, just because of the, of, of the pressures of modern society, I feel like the cultural presences that are there to, to help foster and create community are, are really important. And I think that's really what, you know, what motivates us. So the party on Sunday is at 12 turn 13, which is which is a space that holds a special place in our heart because we've done we've done a number of parties there, working with Steve Rogenstein, who essentially runs the space. The DJ booth for this party is going to be right here. Usually, it's been up in the kitchen. Steve's a very close friend. We love working with him. But he also has just this like magnificent space. You know, it's a really warm, cozy loft space that has windows, so we can get natural light coming in there, mm -hmm. and it allows us to set up in a manner that's very in keeping with what with what Mr. Saturday Night is about. 350 days of the year I live here, and 15 days of the year it's a party space. So I knew that I couldn't afford to have a venue and a home in separate places. Uh, so, you know, I wanted a space that I could do both in. 
I don't think my mother would understand it or could deal with it. But it's gotten to a point where at four o'clock, if I'm tired and the music's pounding and the party is just in its throes, I can fall asleep like that. Uh, there are more folks. Crowds that come for Mr. Saturday Night, they are this right crowd. They're here because they're music heads. They love what we're doing, what we're offering, what the DJs are bringing. And they come and they respect that this is an underground venue. Some of them know it's a home, many of them do not. But, you know, they treat it like it's a place that they respect. You see people dancing, facing away from the DJ, you see stuff like that, and you realize this is a party. People are really into the vibe here, they're really into the music. We get to say, okay, these are the bartenders, and we get to talk to the bartenders directly and say, the most important thing is for people to feel welcome here. Their aesthetic is very strong. Who they get to work with them is strong. I think they'll go so far as to make sure that the bouncer says, you know, I hope you had a great night. Like, it's, it, they're, they're into the detail. So we'll do that again for sure. Thank you guys for being here. We'll see you very, very soon. Have a safe night. Have a good holiday weekend. Be well. In the last few months, I've really noticed that there seems to be room for everyone. You know, if you really want to go hear some disco and some house music, there's a party you can go to, it will be packed. You want to hear some deep techno stuff, you know, there's a lot of various outlets for that. I think there's something special about the, the combination of what's happening right now with the, you know, the, the, the new sort of vibrancy to the scene, but also like the connection to the history that New York has for this culture as well. As much as there's a tradition, and as much as there's a, um, a sense that there's a history culturally in New York, there's no real sense that you have to adhere to it or that you're beholden to it. Reinvention is how it goes in New York. And if you, if you come out with something crazy and interesting that, that also works and, and resonates with people, then it's like, you're good. We have so much influence. We all grew up with like, you know, iPods and we like we, we like so much stuff that it's not weird to like house music and rap music and jazz music. In terms of what I wanted when I was just out of school and what I want now artistically in terms of my goals, they've evolved. And I think that evolution has just come from living in a city that's evolving. New York City, I feel, is always evolving. Uh, even when I leave the country, I come back. I feel like I'm missing something in New York. Over the last 15 years or so, New York has seen a tremendous amount of change in terms of development, uh, in particular in Brooklyn. But there are certain core values and sort of old school institutions that anchor the city that seem to be unchanged and they really give it its heart and soul and character. I think evolution is part of it. I want to evolve. I want to react. I want to react to what's happening around me. Going up! Too bad. Watch them! Watch them! Redbird! Let's go. Woo! <laughs> if you can't do that, clap. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That was our show. Nothing serious. All about having fun. If you like what you see, feel free to donate. Thank you, and God bless. Come here around with the hat. Don't be shy. New York City wears the love. I think there's a larger focus on Brooklyn right now. Actually, it's been gentrified in a lot of ways. Rent is more expensive right here. That also changes a lot of things, you know? It's kind of gross when you think about all the details of it. 
That one just went up. That one just got a second floor. Across the street, there's another six-story building. That one. I used to have a clear view all the way to Fort Greene Park. It's possible that things might get a little bit more clean and sort of polished, which would not be a great thing. Because Brooklyn is the place to be now, you know? It's the cool place. But usually when a place becomes cool, it's over already, right? I mean, everybody fucking knows that. That's not new information. Because then you just get a bunch of shitty rich people coming in and then they start putting up fucking rules everywhere. Like, you can't do this and you can't do that and da 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 da. You know what I mean? Fuck off. We're closing the store after uh, seven years of being open. The landlord is increasing our rent <laughs> way beyond anything that we can pay. Uh, almost tripling our rent. So that's the end of that, you know? We wanted the store to be a place where we could try and change what DJs listen to and what they bought and what they played as well as create a place for all the fucking weirdos. I feel like it was completely individual. A lot of great things happened here. There's been a lot of great parties and a lot of great records have come through and everything, but the f I mean, the people that we've met and the relationships, it just feels good to know you're not the only crazy person in this world. What's the plan? Uh, we're gonna close up the store, that's all. We'll okay. Move in this, the, we're just gonna do online stuff upstate. Okay, yeah. I see you moving upstate too. Yeah, yeah. But you know what's interesting is that with this thing, man, this, yeah. this whole transformation of Brooklyn comes an element of uh, isolation and, and, and almost <laughs> loneliness, man. Yeah. Yeah, because you're just looking around going, wait a second, I came here to get away from this. Exactly. And here it comes. Man. Here it comes. Exactly. <laughs> Going out the way we came in, spending too much money, losing money, and fucking laughing the whole time doing it. You know what I'm saying? New York is outrageously expensive, and Brooklyn has become even more expensive. So it's like all these people come here now because they want to because they think sex in the city is real. They think Gossip Girl is real, so that's where they come, you know? So they come here to Brooklyn to live out their fucking Gossip Girl and, you know, sex in the city fantasies. So it sucks, you know? Get, the more you think you see things begin and end, you know, life, everything. It sucks, right? It sucks to see things that you love come to an end. For me, yeah, it sucks to see this place come to an end. It's probably also the best thing that could ever happen to me. Because if not, I would fucking be sitting here screen printing fucking shirts until the day I fucking died. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah, it sucks. You know, those relationships that you make and the, the good times that you have. I mean. Yeah, no doubt about it, this has been the best time of my life. It's always changing. There's always new places opening up, places closing, and new places opening up. New York's based on change. It started from day one. When I lived in the East Village, it was a Jewish neighborhood, then a Puerto Rican neighborhood, then white people took it over, and it's always based on change. 
And you can't live in the past. The past is done. It's a wrap. You can't keep talking about the past, how the city used to be. If you're gonna do anything, you be, be productive. It has to be what hap what's happening now. You know, you look to the past for reference and you look to that to maybe guide you. But if you just keep referencing how the city used to be, there were, you know, 2,000 nightclubs and you could stay out for three days straight. It's like you could keep wanting that, but it's not gonna ever happen again. So it's like dealing with what you're dealing with now. Everything's cyclical, so at some point, I'm sure things will change again. But what's been built here in the past few years and even much longer for the people who've had the ability to stick with it, I don't think that'll go away. I don't want the easy road, you know? Nothing, nothing comes easy ever pays off. So like, I'm here, this is it. I, I'm not going anywhere. These days in New York, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. There's, there's still an amazing group of musicians out here. There's an amazing group of promoters of events, of, uh, of talent. You know, there's levels of struggle here that you don't face in other cities, but there's something to be said about trying to support a scene and trying to stay true to it.